In this video, I'll show you how to use the Azure Storage SDK for .NET to send, receive, and delete messages on an Azure Storage queue. Welcome along or welcome back to our channel. My name is Chris Roberts and this is Robert's Dev Talk. Now message queues are a brilliant way of decoupling different parts of your web application. So moving long running tasks like creating documents, sending emails, that kind of thing into separate services, therefore keeping your main application user experience nice and fast and smooth. Now Azure storage queues are a cheap and effective way of using message queues at scale in the cloud. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how to send, receive, delete and handle messages in .NET using the latest version 12 and above SDK for C Sharp. Now over the past few videos in this series, we've been creating a microservice in C Sharp that's designed to pick up messages from an Azure storage queue that are sent whenever a customer makes an order. We've been building on the .NET Core worker template and using the Coralville task scheduler to schedule our jobs. So I'll be continuing that example in this video. However, this code of course will work with your projects as well and then any .NET project from .NET Core version 3.1 and above. Now the purpose of this service is to pull messages from an Azure storage queue that relate to customer orders and then send out confirmation emails. So with that in mind, I've created an order info class. This contains some information about the order, including the customer name and their email. Also notice that I've created a queue message ID and queue pop receipt properties on the class. These are for interacting with our Azure storage queue, which we'll see later. I also created an interface iOrderConnector. This contains two methods, getNextOrder and RemoveOrder, which both return tasks so we can await them. Now, interfaces are great for working with dependency injection, and also, of course, we can perhaps mock our queue if we wanted to do that for purposes of testing. I've created an implementation of my iOrderConnector, called order queue connector. This will be registered as a singleton in the container. So the constructor will only be called once at the start of our application. Now in order to interface with the Azure storage queue, we need to install the storage SDK. So we'll go down to our terminal and we'll run .NET add package Azure storage queues. We'll run that. If we look in our CS project file, we'll see that the version 12.7 of the SDK has been installed. Now version 12 contains quite a few big changes from version 11. So keep watching to find out how to use the updated SDK. So let's talk to our Azure storage queue. Let's head over to our order queue connector. And first you want to use the built-in logger for logging out messages. So we'll add a private read-only iLogger of type order queue connector and call that logger. And let's keep IntelliSense happy by adding the Microsoft Extensions logging package into our usings. And then to talk to our queues, we'll add a private read-only queue client. And we'll call that order queue client. Now, IntelliSense wants us to add the Azure storage queues using statement. Let's create a constructor. And let's inject the iLogger of type order queue connector we'll call that logger and then assign logger. Now we need to set up our order queue client. And in previous versions of the SDK, we created a connection to the storage account itself and then got instances of the queues. In this version of the SDK, we just create a queue client directly using the connection string and the name of the queue. So first of all, let's get the connection string from our environment. Now this retrieves the storage connection string from the environment. I'm using a .n file to load my environment variables into my project during development. If you'd like to see how to use .n files with .NET, then check out the video, which I'll link somewhere up here above. So now we have our connection string. We also want to create a queue options object. This allows us to configure how our queue client behaves. So we'll create a new variable and call it var queue opts, and that will be a new queue client options object. Now what we want to do is we want to configure our queue client to automatically encode and decode our messages using base64. This is great for making sure that our formatting is all correct and we're not losing anything in transition, but also previous versions of the SDK and some of the Azure functions runtimes use base64 encoding by default when sending and receiving messages. So we want to be consistent with them. So all we need to do is set our message encoding to queue message encoding dot base 64. Finally, let's assign our order queue client using the constructor new queue client, pass in our connection string, the name of the queue, which will be customer orders, and then finally our queue opts object. Now, when we first start our application, it may be that our queue does not yet exist. So we have a great little method on order queue client, which is simply create if not exists. 
This will talk to the Azure Storage API and check if the queue exists. If it doesn't, it'll create it. That's exactly what it says in the tin. Now that's it. We have a client for our order queue. So let's implement our get next order function. So what we want to do is you want to talk to the storage queue, check if there's a new message. If there is, you want to take the JSON inside that message and deserialize it into an order info object and return it to our caller. If not, we'll just return no. So first we'll get a response from our queue using await and then just to support a wait, we'll add async to our declaration. And then we're going to call order queue client dot receive message async. So there's two, the receive messages, which receives multiple messages and the receive message. We just want to get one message off the end of the queue. So we're going to pull receive message async. And this returns a HTTP status wrapper. So it will return a 200 status code if everything's okay, even if there's nothing actually on the queue. So to determine if there is a message there, we need to check if the response dot value is not equal to null. Because the response will always exist and it will generally return a 200 status code if everything is okay. It will be our value that contains the message body. And then we can use built-in helper methods on the SDK to easily deserialize our JSON into an object of type of our choice. So we'll get our order information from response value dot body dot to object from JSON. And we want a type of order info. And remember we had our queue message ID and pop receipt that we needed to set on our order info. So we'll set them from order dot queue message ID is response dot value dot message ID. That's the message ID of the actual queue message itself, not of the order. We'll need that for interacting with delete message later on. So we'll set our pop receipt to response value pop receipt. And then we can return our order. Of course, if nothing is on the queue, we just return null. Now that's everything we need to receive messages from our queue. However, when we receive a message from the queue, we're just really borrowing it. It doesn't get removed from the queue. It just gets hidden for a short time. And this is by design because, for example, if something went wrong in our application, it crashed before we could process it properly. Then if it was removed from the queue, then it would be gone forever. So if we don't tell Azure that we have finished with our message, then it will be returned to the queue after a short period of time, about 30 seconds or so. So once we're done with our message, we need to remove it manually from the queue. To do that, let's implement a remove order. We'll remove our not implemented exception. We'll add async to our declaration and we'll await order queue client dot delete message async. And to delete a message we need is message ID and pop receipt, which we have from our order info. So we can just pass in order dot queue message ID and order dot queue pop receipt. And that's pretty much it for talking to our queue, reading and deleting messages. Let's head over to our program.cs and register our order queue connector as a singleton in the container. So we'll add services dot add singleton and it's an iOrder connector implemented by order queue connector. Now in a previous video, we created a task that is run every few seconds and we call this process order. And that's where we're going to do our talking to the queue and processing the order, sending our email and so on. So if I go to process order now into here, we'll inject our order queue connector. So let's add a read only field of type I order connector and call it order connector. And then in our constructor, we can just request an I order connector from the container and then assign it. Now our scheduler will call the invoke method on our process order. If you'd like to know more about the Coravel task scheduler that we're using, then check out the link to the video, which I'll pop up above and in the description below. So let's go to our invoke method. Let's make it async and let's remove our dummy task. And we're gonna get the next order and await the order connector get next order method. Then we check if it's not equal to null. And for now, we're just going to log out to the console what we've received using a message template, which if you'd like to know more about them, then I'll pop a link down below in the description. So we'll just log out. And we'll add a to-do message to ourselves. And finally, remember we need to tell Azure that we've finished with our message. So in here, we'll call our remove order method on order connector. And we'll pass in the order. And that's it. Now we can try out our project. So let's head over to our order queue connector and just pop a breakpoint in so we can step through and see what's happening. So I'm going to hit F5 
to start up our project. Our service is now running. So I'm going to head over to Azure Storage Explorer and drop a message into my queue. So here I am in Azure Storage Explorer. This is a great little utility. I highly recommend it if you're working with storage queues or blob containers. So I'm going to add a message into the queue. I already have my JSON on the clipboard, so I'm going to paste that in, leave the encoding as base64, which is what we want, and then click OK. And straight away we hit our breakpoint because of course we found a message on our queue. So let's step through and see what happens. So if I hit F10 on my keyboard to step through and then open out our debug panel, we'll see that a order info class has been deserialized from our message. Chris Roberts has ordered a Roberts Dev Talk t-shirt, but he's been a bit stingy and he's only ordered one. If we step through again, we'll see that our queue message ID and pop receipt are populated and then let that run through. We can see our order has been logged out to the console. And if we go back to Azure Storage Explorer, refresh our queue, we'll see it's now empty because we've removed the order message from the queue. Now, what happens if bad JSON or badly formatted JSON gets put into our queue? Well, this would start to cause some issues because our two object from JSON method would throw an exception. And this would mean, of course, that delete message would never be called. So the message will be returned into the queue and then we'd pick it up again and then it would throw an exception. And we end up in an exception loop and that's not something that we want. So we need to handle situations where the JSON JSON is badly formatted inside our message. Now we could just delete the message, but alternatively, it would be good if we could pop it into another queue that another service can handle and log out or deal with properly. And we can just forget about it and make sure we focus on our order queue. And that's what we'll do. So let's create a new queue client and call it poison order queue. Let's instantiate it in the same way as we do our order queue client. With the same connection string, we're going to call this customer orders poison. And we want our queue opt passed in because you want to use base64 encoding. And let's call create if not exists. So now we have two queues. We have an order queue, which is where we get our messages from. And we have a poison queue. This will take any messages that we find are badly formatted. So we can pop them over there and we don't have to worry about them anymore. So let's head down back into our get next order and wrap our processing code with a try catch. Let's remove our rethrow. Let's write out our log message. And now let's send our message on into the poison queue. So we'll call await and we want to call poison order queue client send message async. We just want to send the body of the message. So we'll pass in response value dot body. And then don't forget, we want to remove it from our order queue. So we'll call order queue client dot delete message. And we need to pass in our message ID and our pop receipt. That's it. Let's leave the breakpoint in there, but pop one on our catch code. Let's head back to our Azure Story Explorer and create some bad JSON. So here we are back in our queue. Let's create some bad JSON by adding a message. I'll just say bad JSON because that will not deserialize into a proper object and it will force a JSON exception. Let's click OK. Let's head back to VS Code and run our code. Notice straight away we've hit our breakpoint because there's a message in the queue. Now if we try to step through and deserialize our object, we'll throw an exception. We'll step through here, log out to the console, and we'll send a message into the poison queue and then remove the message from our main orders queue. Now if we head back into Azure Storage Explorer and refresh our customer orders, thankfully we've seen that the bad message has been removed. If we go into custom orders poison and refresh, we'll see there's our message. So another service downstream can process that for us and we can just focus on processing customer orders. So that's how to use the Azure Storage V12 SDK to both read, write and delete messages from storage queues. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to use the Fluent Email Library with .NET Core to send emails using Razor templates. So stay tuned for that. And as always, if you've got any comments or questions about this video or any other in the series, please do drop them down below and I will do my best to come back to you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this kind of content, then please do consider subscribing and tap that bell notification icon so you know when we upload future videos. Also check out the link below to sign up to our Developer Journey newsletter. And if you'd like to support what we do, there's a link to buy me a coffee as well where you can buy us a beer or a coffee. It's all very much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video and happy coding.